The Game Boy line was living the good life in the 90s, dominating any competition in its wake and making Nintendo a very popular name in the handheld market. As the 21st century rolled around, Nintendo took another step forward with the Game Boy Advance in 2001. But they hadn't taken the extra step for it lacked a backlit screen. But just two years later, they rectified this and gave the Game Boy a new special design. It's the Game Boy Advance SP. In this silver metal looking briefcase lies the handheld in question, and as we open these not very effective locks, we witness the various items that'll give a fun time with these. Released March 23rd, 2003, the SP is a redesign of the original GBA, and is a very innovative redesign at that. It's shrunk to a square shape to make it easier to transport, and it can also fold out for easy access to play. Convenience is a word to use here. For folding in and out, it helps to take and play with ease. As you can see, I have two Game Boy Advance SPs. The silver one I've had for all of my childhood, and this one is the classic NES limited edition version. That's a lot to take in, I know. The difference is only in the design while the experience is the same. But the reason I have to is because I actually lost the silver one before I got into game collecting. So I bought this version to bring back the memories of my youth. And then I found the silver SP on the same day. Funny how things happen like that. As we look closer at the SP, we see the simple layout of the D-pad, A and B buttons, and the start and select buttons, all where you would expect them to be. But there's an additional button on the higher up that you can use effectively when the Game Boy is on, of course, to turn your backlit screen on and off. They've finally done it. A backlit screen for a Game Boy. They may have done it first to the Game Boy Light, but it finally arrived to America. We must have been really special to have been kept away from the power of light on our Game Boy screens for so long. On the right side, we have the on and off switch, where also the power and charge lights lie. On the back, we have the L and R triggers and some plugins. The smaller one connects to a wire for multiplayer. Yes, there was no online for handhelds back then. And this one is for the AC adapter. And also, if you have the adapter like this, it can be used as a headphone jack. This is perhaps the only flaw on the SP because every handheld should have a regular headphone jack, but for some reason this system doesn't have one jack of its own. On the left side is the volume switch if you were curious. For games, the SP plays all Game Boy Advance games along with the original Game Boy and Game Boy Color games for those even more retro out there. It adds a bit of clarity with the backlight and all, that also means you can play your Game Boy games in darker places. I took advantage of that when I was younger, playing Lego Star Wars under the covers of my bed before my mom caught me. Good times. The Game Boy Advance is perhaps the finest version of the Game Boy line, at least for me, but I'm pretty sure my opinion is the general consensus. I'm starting to use really fancy words. Makes me smart, I suppose. If you have a chance to find one, you should get it without a second thought, so you can play your Game Boy games in your special dark room. Hopefully that didn't sound too pervy. It's the Game Boy Advance SP. It's no surprise that Nintendo dominates the handheld market, but long before they came into the scene, other companies tried their fair share at the market, flooding it with various self-contained games. I happen to have one of the many still out there, and on the next episode we're going to have a look at a game all about surviving the prehistoric days. If you think I missed anything, please leave a comment. If you like what you see, leave a like. If you think others could get knowledge out of this, share this video. And if you want to see more, go ahead and subscribe. Now if you'll excuse me, nostalgia is calling.